This is the new HDO2 from Fat Shark, and it is the goggle that everybody has been waiting for Fat Shark to finally release. Or is it? Because that's what you're wondering right now. You heard that Fat Shark had a new goggle out, and you know that Fat Shark has a history of doing some things really right, and then some things just confusingly wrong. Or not at all. Leaving the door open for competitors, like Orca and Skyzone, to try to capitalize on their deficiencies. So, with the HDO2, has Fat Shark gotten it right? Have they done all the things that you wish they would do, and none of the annoying things that you wonder why the heck they did it? And really, what you want to know the most, at least according to a survey I did on my Facebook page, is, is the HDO2 better than the original HDO? Should you upgrade? Is the HDO2 better than the Skyzone SkyO3? Which in my review of that goggle, I said it was the best looking screen I'd seen, maybe bar the Orca. Is the HDO2 better than the Orca FPV1? And is the HDO2 better than the DJI goggles? Should you just be buying the DJI goggles instead? Those are questions that we are going to address in this video, as well as a full rundown of everything else you want to know about the new Fat Shark HDO2. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you are going to learn something today. Before we get into the video, I got to take one second and do a shout out to today's sponsor, who is Alex, who's today's sponsor? It's no one. No one is sponsoring this video. Whenever I do reviews of certain products, some people wonder if I'm getting paid to do the review and if they can trust me. And that is not how my channel works. Maybe you're new here, maybe you don't know that, or maybe you're just skeptical of everything on the internet. I don't blame you. Fat Shark did send me these goggles, and that's why you're seeing this review today, the day that the embargo lifts, weeks before any of normal customers could actually buy and have these in their hands. Thank you, Fat Shark, for sending me these goggles. These goggles showed up on my doorstep one day with no preconditions at all from Fat Shark, because that's not how they roll either. And that is why we're going to do this whole review, not with the Immersion RC Rapid Fire, which would be the obvious choice, but the TBS Fusion is going to be in the goggles. Some people at Fat Shark might be a little annoyed about that. I'm sure that Tony Cake is going to be a little annoyed about that, but that's just my little way of saying to you guys, this is an honest review. Fat Shark is not paying me any money to review these goggles. There is no financial arrangement. In fact, I don't think Fat Shark has ever paid me for any of my reviews. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about these goggles. And these goggles are a big freaking deal. These are a big deal for not just Fat Shark as a company, but for analog FPV or digital FPV as it goes forward. Can we back up to the beginning of this year when Orca announced the FPV1 with specs that Fat Shark customers have been drooling for with giant OLED screens, high resolution, and let's face it, a really funny looking shell. And Orca said, we're going to get these goggles in customers' hands around August. And I said, that's ambitious. Because whatever Orca brings to the table, there's one thing that Fat Shark can do, and that is deliver a finished product. Maybe not with a power button, but a finished product. And that is what Fat Shark has done. Because these goggles seem tailor-made to cut right to the heart of Orca FPV-1's appeal. And Orca FPV-1 goggles still aren't in customers' hands as of today. It's now October. Whereas these goggles you can buy right now and, well, you can pre-order them. And they will be in your hands in a few weeks when Fat Shark actually ships. And if Orca threatened to take a few customers away from Fat Shark, DJI... Some people feel like DJI threatens to just end analog FPV entirely, and they're not totally wrong. I've seen more people than I expected, which is to say any people at all, actually just saying, I'm done with analog, I'm just sticking with DJI high definition, and I'm, I'm like, what about micros? What about the price? And more than a few people are just like, screw it, I'm off, I'm off the boat. So... 
Fatshark needs the HDO2 to be the best analog goggle in existence in order to beat Orca, which is shooting for that bar. They need to come in at a price point at or cheaper than Orca's, which isn't that hard because Orca's pretty freaking expensive. <laughs> I almost meant to say freaking and I almost didn't. Orca's pretty freaking expensive. And they also need this to be a great goggle for pairing with Fat Shark's Bite Frost digital FPV system. That is a pretty tall freaking order. And now it is time for us to see if Fat Shark has delivered. A little later in the video, we are going to take a look inside the lenses of the HDO, the HDO2, the SkyZone SkyO3, and the DJI goggle, so you can get a sense of how they stack up together when you literally have them on your face. But let's start by just looking at the form factor of the goggle and the new features that Fat Shark has added. And at first glance, this looks just like any other HDO goggle. But if you look at the bottom, you'll see a few extra things. This, this is a power button. I just never thought this day would come. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh the power button. Oh, 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 oh Patrick, you finally did it. Oh, power button. Oh, oh. As shipped, the power button does not actually turn the goggles on and off. It just works as before. You plug and unplug the goggles because Fat Shark thinks that some people at least will still prefer it the old way. But there is a jumper right here that you can pull off. And if you move it from the rear two to the front two pins, the power button now turns the goggles on and off. A long press on the button turns the goggles on. And as the goggles come on, you can probably hear the fan. The fan comes on automatically. The fan's power supply is wired internally finally, and there's no need to plug a balance connector into the fa fan faceplate or anything like that. The next thing you'll see on the bottom of the goggles is the IPD adjustments, and good news for people with narrow or wide eyes, the HDO2s have an IPD range of 54 to 74 millimeters, the narrowest and the widest that Fat Shark has ever delivered. These dials underneath the IPD adjustment are for focus adjustment. Yes, the HDO2 has built-in diopter adjustment. So unlike earlier Fat Shark goggles that had these lens inserts, the HDO2 can internally adjust for as much as negative six diopter. And I can tell you, I actually have a prescription of negative six two five in one eye and six seven five in the other eye. And although I'm slightly outside of the nominal range that there's, I was worried when they sent them to me. I was like, where's the, I, I have pretty bad eyes, Fat Shark. Did you just screw up? I'm able to get a perfectly crisp and clear picture by moving these knobs all the way to the end of their adjustment range. It does work for me, even though I'm slightly worse vision than, uh, than they're supposed to support. Uh, however, if you have very bad astigmatism, if you have worse prescription than about negative six or maybe a little more, or if you have some other custom set of lenses, like some people use reading glass lenses inside. I don't know why you would need to do that, but I hear that some people do. If you have any of those non-standard prescriptions where an adjustment range of about negative two to negative six diopter isn't gonna work for you, you are kind of out of luck because they don't have a slot for the diopters. Fatshark has said to me, I asked Fatshark about this and I said, are these people just screwed? Are they out in the cold? And they said, if there were a significant number of such people out there, they would try to find a solution for them. But if that's you, then you're not going to be buying this goggle, at least not on opening day. The SD card slot for the DVR on the HD2 is in the same place it's always been. And it's the same DVR that's been in every Fat Shark goggle forever. It does have the new firmware, the updated firmware that eliminates a lot of the black screens and so forth, but it is not the upgraded firmware that is in the Fat Shark Scout goggles and in fact also in this PowerPlay DVR. That is a much better DVR firmware. It records in much higher quality, higher resolution. It's 60 frames per second, whereas the Fat Shark DVR is 30 frames per second. And in fact, it even throws out every other line because it doesn't want to do deinterlacing. Fat Shark said that they didn't want to risk holding up the delivery of these goggles. 
just to get the new DVR integrated. They just didn't feel like that was worth it. And if you look at the delays that some other manufacturers are experiencing, maybe they made the right decision. But a lot of people, including myself, wished, really wanted to see the Scout DVR in these new top of the line goggles. It's not. Another feature that's pretty cool is these inserts that Fetchark has included to try to make the faceplate fit more different people's faces. Some people have a flatter face, some people have a rounder face, and one faceplate doesn't fit them all. Although I have to say, more people use Fat Shark across the world and seem to find the faceplates to fit. I'm really impressed with Fat Shark sort of splitting that difference. These inserts can be left in and give a narrower profile, or they can be removed. They just Velcro on and they will give a shallower profile. Personally, I find that just removing one and leaving the other in seems to give the best fit. Uh, but personally, I'm gonna be ripping this off and replacing it with this newbie drone goggle foam. This is, I think it's neoprene and it is, it's the bomb. It, it's totally worth spending 10 bucks on or whatever newbie drone is charging. And I just love it and will use it forever. But, 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 but a lot of people do like this pseudo leather. So whatever. There's an HDMI input, which can be used with a high definition ground station like Fat Shark Bite Frost, or you can plug it into a laptop and use it to play your simulator. And the resolution on these goggles is actually high enough. No, most FPV goggles, even if they have an HDMI input, if you plug them into a computer, you could play simulator or maybe watch a video, but it's just not high enough a resolution to really be usable. Uh, these are high enough resolution that you kind of could use them as a computer monitor if you really wanted to. The headphone jack on the underside of the HDO2 is in the same place it's always been, but internally, there's been an improvement. On older goggles, if you plugged in just a normal set of headphones, you would only get audio in one ear. And you had to have a kind of special made headphone with just one earpiece like Mr. Steele uses. The headphone on the HDO2s is set up correctly. You can use any set of regular headphones with it, and the audio comes in both ears. A few people have asked about head tracker support for the HDO2. The head tracker button is still there, but if we look inside the head tracker bay, we can see a different layout in the HDOs and uh, earlier goggles compared to the HDO2. Notice, for example, that the plug for the head tracker module is right here in the back of the board on the HDOs, but here it's in a different location. Now let's talk about the screens on the HDO2, and I've got my cheat sheet here just to make sure I get all the details right. The resolution on the HDO2 is 1280 by 960. That's the same as the Orca FPV1. It's way more than the HDO, which is 960 by 720. And it's also more than the Skyzone Sky O30, which is 1024 by 768. Now, these goggles all have one thing in common that is going to, some people are gonna love it and some people are gonna hate it. They are all 4.3 resolution. If you fly with 16.9 widescreen cameras, you can, you're gonna be letterboxing. And yes, the HDO2 does support letterboxing. I, the good news is that thanks to the OLED screens, the blacks are so freaking black that when you're letterboxed, you, you don't, it really just looks like it's a 16.9 screen. What's the field of view? The field of view for the HDO2 is 46 degrees. I'm thrilled with this number because in my experience, around 40 to 45 degrees is, is really a very sweet spot for being able to kind of see the whole screen at the one time without having to like move your eyes too much, but not getting blurry edges or anything like that. The 50 degrees of the HD2 is very immersive, but blurry edges for most people. And the 37 degrees of the HDO, it's like, I don't hate it, but I wish it were a little bigger. So yeah. Orca is advertised as having a field of view of 44 degrees. So Fat Shark's got the same resolution and he's just slightly bigger field of view. Coincidence? I don't think so. Now we come to the part of the video that you've all been waiting for, the part where I take a GoPro and stick it inside the screen of the goggles and let you look at what the screen looks like. And this is the closest you can come to sticking the goggle on your face without actually doing it. But I gotta give it a big caveat. It, 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 this is still a camera and it still doesn't capture the image exactly like your eye does. So I'm gonna ask you, in addition to just looking at these images, to also take my subjective word for how, what I think of the experience and at least give both of those things a little bit of weight. Let's look. 
So here's the HDO2 screen. And one thing you're gonna notice about it is that the screen really goes right to the edges of the circular optical module. Um, it, the IPD adjustment is very sensitive. You have to get it sort of exactly right in order to get the whole screen visible. But I had no problem getting the screens sharp, edge to edge, and centered in my vision. This is really good for me because I have an IPD of about 62 millimeters, just about a millimeter narrower than previous Fat Shark goggles could do. On these goggles, I could get the IPD and the focus exactly right, even without my glasses. When I reviewed the SkyZone Sky O30, I really liked their contrasty image with deep blacks and bright whites, but some people felt that the HDO's image had more detail and was more natural looking. A great thing about the HDO2s is that Fat Shark built in a picture menu where you can adjust brightness, contrast, saturation, and sharpness, and even the power setting, which when you turn it up, just increases the sort of raw brightness of the screen. So you really have a lot of ability to tweak the HDO2 to have the kind of image you want. One of the things a lot of people notice about the OLED screen and the HDO and also the Attitude V5 is that they have a really reddish color cast, a very warm color temperature. The color temperature is not adjustable on the HDO2 and although I don't think it's as warm as the HDOs were, it is still a little bit of a redder more than a bluer color and some people may find it to be a little bit unnatural. Here's the Fat Shark HDO, and you can judge the difference in screen size between the HDO2 and the HDO from this, but I really don't think you can judge the difference in resolution. The higher resolution of the HDO2, the GoPro isn't really gonna be able to pick that up. And even when you're flying with it, I don't think you're gonna see a difference if you're flying with a standard definition camera between the 960 resolution of the HDO and the 1280 resolution of the HDO2. If you're flying with an HD ground station though, that could make a difference. Here's the SkyZone Sky O30 with just a little smaller field of view than the HDO. And if you want to hear more about the difference in picture quality between the HDO and the Sky O30, I would suggest you go watch my review of the Sky O30. I go into a lot of detail there. In short, I personally think the Sky O30's image looks better. I don't think it gives up any detail and it has brighter screens, darker blacks, and brighter whites. I think it beats the HDO. Does it beat the HDO too? You can draw your own opinions by looking at this image. I'll give you my opinion at the end of the video. Last but not least, I want you guys to look inside the screen of the DJI goggles. And it may seem silly to include those in this review, but there are people out there, the, the HDO2s are, I don't actually know what their final pricing is, but surely they're not gonna be cheaper than the HDOs, which are currently 450 bucks and were 500 bucks when they first released. These goggles are not that much more expensive, especially if you're gonna put a high priced module like a rapid fire in your HDOs. So there are definitely people out there who are gonna cross shop these, especially because these can take an analog input. These could be your analog goggles or you could just be asking yourself the question, should I just get DJI and say the hell with analog? The heck with analog? Or should I be looking at a high-end analog goggle? Let's take a look. The DJI goggle has a 1440 by 810 resolution, which is wider than the 1280 resolution of the HDO2, but less than the vertical resolution of 960. Uh, especially if you're zooming the image out like I am, you're probably getting less effective resolution on the uh, DJI than the HDO2, but, the DJI is a high definition image and the HDO2 is for most of us gonna be displaying a standard definition image. So obviously the DJI has more resolution even if it has fewer pixels. So the DJI wins on resolution, but we kind of knew that already. Comparing the actual image quality and the quality of the screens, we can definitely see that the DJI's LCD screen is inferior to the Fat Shark's OLED screen. The blacks are not nearly as black. It has much less contrast, much less color richness. And it's really only when I put the DJI side to side with an OLED screen like the HDO2 that these things really jump out. For pure analog, the HDO2 has to take this one. So that brings us to the end of the video. And as always, the question, should you buy it? And when I think about the questions people asked on my Facebook, when I asked them what they wanted to know about these goggles, a lot of the questions boiled down to, is it better? Is the HDO2 better than the HDO? Absolutely, 
hands down. The screens look better. They are a larger, they're a 0 0.5 inch panel. So it's a larger, higher quality panel. The ability to adjust the focus and the IPD more than ever before means that you can get the screens exactly where you need them to be. So the image is crisp edge to edge. It's a higher resolution image. It's a just better looking and it's tweakable. You can change the brightness, contrast, and etc in ways that you never could. Well, you could always adjust brightness and contrast, but this is way more adjustable. The HDO2 is absolutely a better looking goggle than the HDO. In fact, if you're thinking of an HDO for, let's say it's currently retailing for 450 bucks, obviously you gotta, you know, do your wallet check. I don't actually know the final retail price of these yet, but if these came out at 500 bucks, which were the same price that the HDOs were when they first came out, this would be, you just don't buy it. Don't buy an HDO. They'd have to knock the HDO down to closer to 400 bucks to make it worth considering. I just bought a set of HDOs like two or three months ago and upgraded from my HD3s. I spent $450 on these. Anybody want to buy a set of HDOs lately used? Yeah, no. HDOs are my analog daily driver. These are my new analog daily driver. I'm going to need to get them custom color coded. So, is the HDO2 better than the SkyZone SkyO30? Yes. Yep. Yep. All the things that I thought that I liked better about the SkyO30 in terms of the, the, the brightness and so forth. The HDO2 addresses that. You can make the HDO2 screen look basically just like the SkyO30 screen, except the SkyO30, you can kind of see a little bit of screen door. You don't see that on the HDO2. That being said, the SkyO30 comes in around 420 bucks less if you can get it on sale. There's no way the HDO2 is going to be that cheap. The HDO isn't that cheap. So especially when you consider the fact that with the SkyO30, you get a great looking image and you don't have to spend another dime on a module, the SkyO30 still has a long life ahead of it for people who can't quite get up into that five or $600 price range, but still want a really good looking goggle. Maybe not with the best range on the module, but good enough to get the job done. Last question, and this is the hardest one. Should you just say the hell with it all, buy DJI and never look back? Some of you are going to hate me for even mentioning that question. But I got to tell you, I talk to a lot of people. I have more market research about people in FPV than maybe anybody because you guys bring me your questions all day, every day. And I read almost every one of them. And there are people out there who are asking this question. There are people out there who have already made the leap. They don't care about micro. They just forget it. If I can't fly it with DJI, I don't want to fly it. And that astounds me, but it is true. So if you are thinking about getting into FPV and you're starting from scratch and you've got a giant freaking budget and you can ask the question, HDO2 versus DJI, here's, here's the thing. DJI hands down delivers a better experience in terms of image quality and a better experience in terms of usability because it auto manages the channels. There's no interference and a better experience in terms of the build because it's with the right flight controllers. You just plug in the air unit, you plug in the ESC, you do still have to solder up the motors, but then the quad is done. It's got a lot that it has to offer and it has a lot to offer to a beginner because they will benefit from all of those things. You just have to have the mo money to pony up. What are you losing if you go that direction? You are losing the social aspect of FPV. And that is, you don't underestimate that. Until all your friends have DJI, you won't be, they won't be spectating your awesome exploits and you won't be spectating yours, theirs. You'll be sort of flying by yourself, even if you're in a group of people. And that, you can't really underestimate that until you've been there. You also will have to commit to putting DJI in all of your quads, not, which not everybody wants to do. Maybe you want like a long range, high definition quad, but then you just want to put a $25 video transmitter in something else. The Fat Shark HDO2s can serve that need. And don't forget, Fat Shark HDO2s also work with Fat Shark Bite Frost. And when I reviewed Bite Frost, I think everybody walked away from that review saying it's not as good yet as DJI, but 
Fat Shark is still working on it. It still has room to get better. And when it, when and if it does get better, it's going to work with these goggles. And it's not going to work with these goggles. These goggles will still work with all your analog quads at the end of the day. I got to tell you guys, it's, it, it is a tough question. If I were starting from scratch and had to decide to spend like $600 on DJI goggles versus 500 or whatever it turns out to plus, plus rapid fire, $600 for HDO2s, I don't envy anybody who has to make that decision today. You just got to gut check yourself. If you can look inside the goggles and fly them, see, see, try that. And then at the end of the day, plunk your credit card down and buy what feels right to you. Fortunately, I am a YouTube reviewer, so I get them all. Yay! Whee! Should probably do a giveaway. I should probably do a giveaway. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give away my HDOs. Don't comment on this video. Because I'm keeping these. I'm keeping the HDO 2s These are my new analog daily driver. Don't comment on this video because I want to hear your comments. And when I do a giveaway, I have to lock down the comments. I'm going to post another video and you'll leave one comment and one comment only on that video to be entered to win my custom purple HDOs that I just bought because I didn't know the HDO 2s were coming out. Fat shark. Okay. Okay. That's going to do it for this video. Oh, right. One more thing. The affiliate links, right? They're down in the video description. If you want to buy one of these things, click those affiliate links. I get a small commission. The usual. Happy flying, you guys.